Welcome back everyone. As you probably saw from the description or thumbnail, we're setting up some retro computers for a LAN party here now. There's actually a large modern LAN party happening here in town a few times a year. And the organizer actually reached out to me and asked, are you interested in setting up a few retro machines that people can sit down and experience the original LAN party stuff from the late 90s? And I, of course, jumped at the opportunity. You may remember me doing this like a year ago or so, where I actually brought just one computer and people noticed that. And that's how they reached out to me this time. I think that's really cool. I want to give people a chance to literally sit down and, and play these machines as they were, right? So this video is more covering what I did to the computers, which ones I picked, some of the stuff we're going to do to fix them up beforehand to make sure that they are working for this LAN party. But there will be a full video later covering the actual event where I'll talk more about, you know, the venue, the event, uh, you know, how it went down and everything. So, so this mostly, again, will be just setting up the machines. So hopefully you enjoy. So for this little uh, LAN party, I've opted to bring three different machines and we'll go over each machine uh, one at a time as well. But we have the P3700 over here. Uh, you've seen me stream on that one a lot. It has a Voodoo 5 currently in it. Again, we'll crack it open and take a look at it, but that's going to be kind of the core of this setup. We have a Dell P3450, uh, which I've also streamed on. Also a very solid machine, but it definitely needs a little uh, fixing up to, to make it worthy for this event. So um, we'll take a look at that individually. And over here, way over here, we have a P3, currently an 866. Uh, you might recognize that machine as uh, something I brought to another uh, kind of LAN party a year or so ago. And uh, it's gone through a couple of changes, had some problems. So uh, we'll go through that one as you crack it and take a look and see what I've done to it. And all these machines, uh, probably not this one over here needs much, but all the other ones do need a little bit of a tune up and fix up and uh, clean out and everything to make sure they're gonna run for the event. I also have a modern machine I'm going to bring, a small one, that allows me to download patches and get stuff like that. Because you know what happens, you go to an event like this and sure enough you forget to uh, have a file ready or download something. So I still need a modern machine, I can't go to this event with just a retro machine. So they are currently all set up uh, to be networked, as you expect, and I'm testing everything to make sure they can transfer files back and forth. The uh, network in the games work and everything, which we'll go over at the end of this video here now, the finalized setup. But this was kind of the first test fitting to make sure that they all could talk to each other, etc. So uh, without further ado, we're going to go into each machine individually. We'll go over the specs quick and uh, why I'm bringing that particular machine and if anything needs to be fixed on it. So now again, the uh, first machine is our P3700 here, which uh, is very, very familiar if you've seen me stream. But there's really nothing wrong with this machine. We'll just take a quick look at what's inside as far as the specs go. Um, there's really nothing that needs to be fixed up with this. It is ready to go. I just need to get the uh, games I need installed on and everything. But uh, let's take a quick look inside as the refresher was actually installed in this machine. So this particular machine that uh, if you've watched me stream, you've definitely seen this in action. Uh, this is a P3700 using a slot cut adapter and a socket 370 CPU on there. Um, and we have the uh, you know main event on this machine, which is the Voodoo 5 AGP, of course. 5500 card. Uh, it's a uh, nice period accurate card for this particular machine, even though the CPU could maybe be a little faster, but we have a Soundmaster Live sound card, a network card. We have 192 megabytes of RAM, dual CD-ROM drives, floppy, we have a zip drive, and we have a functioning regular hard drive. So this machine is pretty much ready to go. There's no fixing or tweaking to be needed on this one, since I use this one basically almost every week for streaming. Uh, I made sure that it's in uh, full working condition and everything and hasn't really had any problems at all for, for a long time now. So we're going to call this one solid and uh, not mess with something that's working, let's just say that. But uh, again, the uh, main piece on this one, of course, is that Voodoo 5 5500, give you that uh, pinnacle of 3D effects acceleration. So we'll go to the next machine. Not much to say about this one. All right, there's no mistaking, this is a Dell, a Dell from 1999, an XPS T450, which the name implies. We have a P3450 on board here. This machine I got locally from a gentleman who uh, said I could have it as long as I uh, got it files off it for him, which I did. And after that, I was given it for free, which is really nice. Now, it was extremely dusty when I got it. And I'll uh, see if I can find the clip and overlay it here when I actually used the blower to uh, clean out the machine because it was very, very dusty. So we'll take another look here as we open it. 
and see if we need to do some more cleaning. Uh, you can tell already it has some scuff marks and it's, it's been a well-loved machine. But I do love the fact that it is original from that era. It is a true 1999 spec Asus. We'll go into the detail specs as we open it up here, but it's actually been running really well as well after I reloaded it, uh, considering I haven't really done much to it. But we do have to do a little more to this machine to get it uh, to the working order for this LAN part that I want to. Uh, we'll, that will become immediately apparent as soon as I crack it open. So let's get to that. All right, so I took the uh, fan shroud off here for the processor. And uh, on board then we have a, uh, so, uh, sorry, slot one P3450. Again, very typical for 1999. We have an AJP Voodoo 3 on board, which is a nice surprise for this machine to say the least. The uh, gentleman I got it from did say that he uh, maxed out the specs for this the best he could. We have a uh, Turtle Beach Aureal Vortex 2 sound cord, sound card <laughs> on board. We have a uh, network card and a modem. And then, uh, you know, the original hard drive, double CD-ROM drives, and one actually doesn't work, so it is currently unplugged, uh, and then a floppy drive. So. This is a very nice 1999 machine, but uh, the first thing, of course, that you saw from the clip there was that it was so dirty. So we'll do probably not a round of cleanup. The case is a little scuffed and beat up, but I guess we can call that just, uh, you know, historical marks on it. But the Voodoo 3, of course, is a card that is well known to be very problematic when it comes to heat. It doesn't dissipate heat very well, and I'll show a clip here of it uh, being overlaid with running full load for a while and you'll see the temperature uh, on where it's getting. Now take the temperature reading out here with a kind of grain of salt. This is not a super accurate thermometer but you'll get an idea what we're dealing with um, in the stock form and the temperature on the back of the card. It heats up pretty darn fast and very quickly. The, again because the Voodoo 3 lacks any kind of active cooling. It just has a big passive heatsink and um, that's kind of a common problem. We don't want to have that problem with this machine running for a long time. So we're gonna take care of the Voodoo 3 for starter. So let's take that apart and maybe put a fan on it. So here we have the iconic Voodoo 3 as we already mentioned here now. And uh, as many of you are familiar with, this has just passive cooling. If this was a smart choice on a 3DFX part or not, uh, well, let me know really, but it is kind of like a known issue with these cards that they just generally run hot because of the uh, cooling solution is just not beefy enough really. And I mean, over time, that may even cook the card, you know. This card is still working just fine, but based on the fact where it came from or how dusty and dirty the machine was, uh, it needs a little more. So the card itself is not terribly dirty or anything. I mean, it's fine right now. But again, we we're trying to get a little upgraded cooling solution for this machine so that uh, it can run for many, many hours in, uh, you know, in a large setting and without having any problems. So the cool thing is that, as you can see, there are four clips here for this heatsink, but only two are used to hold the heatsink on here. Now, it uses kind of like this adhesive glue uh, slash thermal paste, which you can probably get off with like a heat gun or something, but it, it's on there pretty good. So we're gonna leave that for now um, and just see if we can use these two spots here to mount a fan. And the fan in question we have has to be a 50 millimeter fan. It's just a, you know, off the shelf, in this case, StarTech brand fan that we can actually mount. It should line up perfectly with those holes there, if we can see that. Now, how would you mount this on here? Well, there's a few different ways to do this. Of course, you can use more robust methods, but we're gonna use the high-tech technology, high-tech technology, zip ties. I think this is a very, very common mod as I found people to do on uh, on their cards because it is an easy way and it's reversible, of course. It's just a, you know, it's just a fan attached like this. And the cool thing with this fan uh, that it lines up exactly with the holes then is that we won't uh, use a lot of extra space or anything. And then uh, with this slim design here, it shouldn't take more than an additional slot next to the card versus like maybe a full size 80 millimeter fan or anything. And again, uh, if I forgot to mention, this is a 50 millimeter fan, it's on the box, which lines up with the holes. A 40, it's 40 millimeters between these holes, which means that we need a fan that's larger to accommodate that. So. We should just be able to thread this through here carefully. Do a little extra tool here to make this maybe a little easier. 
All right, comes a pro tip directly from the content creator. Make sure your memory card in your camera has enough space on it. Otherwise, it will cut you off. Anyway, we have a finished product here now with the zip ties holding the fan in place on the heatsink. And again, this makes it very easy to reverse. We just snip this off if we need to. Uh, beyond that, we now have a actively cool Voodoo 3 with just a standard three pin fan header of course we can use uh, the adapter that was included to power from our five pin or four pin molex connector if we need to but beyond that that should be it so let's get this back in the in the uh, computer and uh, see if the thermos a little better after we clean out the machine so let's take a look at the machine itself again so we have the uh, Voodoo 3 back in the machine uh, it is now powered through just a uh, standard molex connector with the adapter here and overall, the machine isn't that bad. I mean, it certainly has, uh, and it's probably not showing up too well on video here, but it has certainly uh, seen uh, its fair share of uh, storage scuffs and who knows what, but besides just a couple dust bunnies and everything, it is really not, not that bad. Um, it could be a lot worse. It's not gunky or anything. Yeah, it's dusty, but nothing's gonna make the machine not run. And uh, you know, you could spend hours basically fine tuning and cleaning this and uh, probably wouldn't get too much out of it. We check our thermal reading again here on the back of the card. We can see that temperature has dropped quite a bit. Again, this is not the most accurate thermometer, so just take you know results with a grain of salt. But we're still seeing, at least in my measurement here, a drop of you know 15 degrees Celsius or you know 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which is substantial. The last and third machine for this event is going to be this gateway, which you probably can recognize if you watch my other videos. This particular model is one that I uh, cleaned up and uh, fixed up last time I went to this similar event. And uh, it had a little bit of uh, issues and problems that I took care of as well. But this particular one, of course, is very yellow. And I did attempt to retrobrite it uh, mildly successful. It did get better, but not nearly as good as I wanted to. So I might try a different method here soon with this again to see if I can make it uh, a little more like the rest of the case, which is definitely more beige. And this is more, you know, kind of patina yellow. But... It is clean, it's just very, very yellowed. The major difference with this one is that it used to have a Pentium 3 933 in it, which it does not anymore. This processor. I actually used this processor for something else and had similar problems with another machine. It was just not stable and everything. And I plopped in a 833, still a Pentium 3 in this machine, and it's been running rock solid since. So it might just be that this particular processor is not working or has problems, but so far so good. You know, 866, uh, sorry, to 933 is not going to make a big difference. It's an 866 in here. And uh, the stability is well worth it. So the other major change, uh, which we'll see as we open it up here, is that we have switched to Voodoo Graphics. So let's go ahead and open the case and take a look inside. All right, with the case cracked, it's a very cramped design. Actually pretty convenient, or, you know, it's hard to work in, but it's very small. So... One of the main drop grades now is that there used to be a Radeon N250 in here, but there is now a PCI Voodoo 3, which I think fits the machine better overall. The Radeon was definitely faster, but the Voodoo 3 gives you, well, Voodoo graphics, which is fun. We will do the same case modification, not case, sorry, the same fan modification to this card. I won't show that again. We'll just kind of speed through that. But some of the problems that it had then, besides the processor being the main issue, which now has been very solid, was that... I wasn't getting the temperatures I wanted out of this machine, and I had basically just kind of jury-rigged a very large fan, because there's no fan intake. What I realized was that some eagle-eyed viewer that uh, watched the last video on this machine from a long time ago now, was that I had put the fan and the power supply in backwards, so it was basically blowing hot air into the machine and not ejecting it, which means that we had no eject of hot air from the machine at all. Yes, by default, there is no inflow, there's no fan by design in this case, um, but it should be plenty if we add that Voodoo 3 fan on there. But before then, there was no way to get the hot air out of the machine, which is not correct. This now blows hot air out, as it should, which has improved the thermal. So between the Voodoo 3, fixing the fan, and that slower processor, this machine has now been running really, really well. So we're going to do the same fan modification on there with the fan modification on the Voodoo 3. I'm not concerned about the intake on this machine, so we will remove this big fan here. I don't think it's needed. We'll do some stress testing on it to make sure it's not, you know, crashing or anything like that. But beyond that, we do have a Sunmaster Live card here as well. A network card integrated, of course, standard hard drive. This machine is otherwise pretty much unchanged since that original video I did on it. And it's, it's a nice, solid machine. Um, again, I like the form factor. It's compact without being ridiculous. 
Uh, if I could just get that uh, case a little bit cleaned up, but we're gonna take care of that fan on the Voodoo 3 next. So well, same thing again here, that uh, this is just a PCI version of the Voodoo 3, which the AGP and the PCI are virtually identical. There was no specific benefit to the AGP version of the Voodoo 3. 3000, I should say, both of these are. And uh, we once again installed the uh, fan here, which makes it easy to, to reverse that should we wanted to. It's all zip tied. Let's cut off the excess here. And we will improve our thermals. Again, if you want to take this out, easy enough. Just snip a couple of uh, cable ties and you're on our cable ties, zip ties, and you're done. But this should, again, provide us a very needed cooling boost to this uh, card. And I'm not going to do the thermals on this card, just expect to be about the same as we did on the other one. But I think it's an easy and quick upgrade. Uh, you know, a 5 to $6 50 millimeter fan, uh, power that, a couple of zip ties, good to go. And of course, this does make this card a two-slot card, but it's still not as, uh, you know, unwieldy as maybe, you know, putting a huge fan on here. I think this is plenty to cool, at least from what I've seen. The card is generally fine, even without the active cooling, but I feel a lot better getting that extra cooling there. It does run quite hot, so we're going to put that back in the machine, uh, take the fan out and uh, the other fan, and that machine's pretty much ready to button up. Now we're going to install some games. The reason why the uh, PCI version of the Voodoo 3 is pretty nice here is that this machine has no AGP slots, which I should mention as well. That kind of kind of makes it a, you know, problem for that. So we're going to attach this to the extra fan header wire I already have here. Not fan header, but fan power cable. And there we go. So now we have <clears throat> very nicely aligned cooling there and everything. But this machine is pretty much ready to go now. We'll do some more stress testing on it and run it hard to, to kind of make sure it keeps the thermal problems away. But overall, I mean, this machine now has been very solid since uh, this cursed processor was removed. It's interesting. I don't have a way to test this or anything beyond just that it was unstable. I'm not sure how to describe it, but whatever. It's uh, it's gone now, so this machine is ready to be put back together. Well, first off, to connect all these machines together, we need network, and uh, they're all just using TCP IP and IPX, both so they support newer and older games. And to actually network them, I'm just going to use your, your bog standard workgroup switch. They don't need any internet access, but I do one little trick, one of my favorites to do, is that I have a modern computer over here, as you can tell, and the modern computer is basically shared with this Windows 98 machine here using a KVM switch so I can switch back and forth. But the modern machine will have two networks on it, so it actually has a USB to network dongle plus the integrated network. And I can basically connect it then to the retro network, which is then isolated. It can't get out anywhere. But then the machine, the modern machine, also allows you to connect to the internet through using that second internet connection or network connection. Those two connections allow me to kind of best of both worlds. I have a bridge machine that can transfer files from the internet. I can browse the web, whatever I need to. And I can add transfer files to the internal network. All these machines are set up to share files with each other. So I can copy files back and forth if need be. You know, if something breaks, I can reload, whatever. Uh, and above all, using that modern machine as a bridge setup, allowing me to transfer files in and out of the network. And I think using double NICs like that is a really nice thing to do so that your old machines aren't directly connected to the public network. Because, I mean, let's face it, putting a Windows 98 machine on a very wide open network in a huge LAN party setting, mm, yeah, not a, not a great idea. Uh, that does mean I have to enable SMB1 client on this old machine to be able to browse to these. But beyond that, I can transfer files back and forth, just go to network browser, they're all found immediately. So it's kind of my favorite trick to do this sort of setup. And uh, it works really well. So now, all the machines drop are running, and I wanted to give just a taste of this. I'm not sure how well this will be picked up on audio. I'll walk closer in a second, but all three of them are running now, and uh, it's very noisy in here. Now, they're going to be in a huge area with tons of other computers, modern machines with, you know, high-powered fans, whatever. Probably won't be able to tell right there, but in here, with all three running right now, it is it is pretty, pretty loud. Uh, these are old-school original fans, right? Most of them are not modern fans. So there's some modern fans in here, but most of them are the original ones. So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty noisy, but it's part of the experience, right? So that means that we now have all three machines up and running, connected, uh, and are networked. So uh, the next step would be basically just to install a whole bunch of games and make sure all the games are working over network and all that good stuff. Uh, but other than that, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty locked and loaded as far as uh, ready to go, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let me get the microphone a little closer here. Noise.
glorious noise. All right, and there we have it. We have three machines basically ready to go. Just have a lot more games to install, which uh, takes a long time, so I expect to be doing that for a while. But you might ask yourself, why did I pick these particular machines or these particular specs? Well, availability, right? I don't have 100 machines ready to go, and I don't have you know 50 different video cards I can just pick from. So these are the ones I have, and I think they all are generally period accurate. I think they are good representative machines from that general era. And of course, you know, Glide and Voodoo and 3FX for me is pretty nostalgic, so that, that helps me. Now there are other fine video cards and other sound cards that would work really well for these setups. So I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Make sure to leave a comment if there's particular components you would have swapped out or things you might have feel are better suited for it. You know, there's always upgrades, there's always alternatives, so I'm uh, curious to see what you think. But beyond that, the machines are ready to go in general. And I'm looking forward to having people sit down and kind of just get that experience from the late 90s, you know, fragging each other in a real tournament. Very nostalgic for me, so I'm curious to see both uh, younger people maybe experience it the first time or people remembering it fondly. So, because we're all getting old, we're all getting older. But anyway, uh, I'm going to make a separate video that covers the actual event and people experiencing the machines. You know, uh, the venue and everything, so look forward to that. Uh, we come out after the event, of course. Uh, but I hopefully in, you enjoyed watching me set these machines up. It, I love tinkering with this stuff. It's always fun. Little challenges to overcome here and there. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And uh, look forward to the other one coming out soon. So thank you very much for watching. And see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my other ones. I cover a wide range of retro topics, including often old computers. You can find me on social media or on my website at rickstrandretro.com. And be sure to catch me live on Thursdays at 8.45pm Central, where I often stream a random selection of random retro games.